the song that played when Frieza transformed, that was like some OG Dragon Ball Z stuff right there. Like when we had Goku transform or when we had Cell transform into his perfect form. Just that scene at the end of this episode when Frieza's like, oh, I guess I don't have time to mess around. We don't have time. He's like, join me. And he just starts transforming and the entire planet just starts glowing gold. That was an impressive scene. That got me really hyped for Frieza and more from his character. Regardless of how many might feel about Frieza's return, you cannot tell me that was not badass. Just the chemistry between Goku and and Frieza. That was so interesting, because these two characters, ever since we've ever seen these two in the same scene, they've always basically fought. Frieza wants to kill Goku, and Goku has to stop Frieza. And for the first time, Frieza and Goku are on the same side, for now. And it adds a very interesting layer to these two characters, because after so many years, after 15 plus years of Dragon Ball Z and this and all that, we never would have thought we would have seen Goku and Frieza working together, and when Frieza pops up, and when they just have this casual conversation, you're like, holy crap, this is very weird, but the chemistry of it works, because why Frieza just walks up, like, he just comes back, he's like, oh, how vexing, he just, you know, he sees how he's still dead and all that, he has a halo, and he's just walking over to Goku and all that, very slowly, and when all of a sudden just punches Goku right in the gut, that just goes to show you that Frieza has not changed, he still harbors that hatred inside of him, just punching Goku like that, and I especially love what Frieza says, he's like, oh, sorry, my hand slipped, and then Goku's like, uh, that can't be helped. And then he punches Frieza in the gut and he's like, my hand slipped too. That was a really good moment. Just seeing these two characters that have fought for so long having that type of conversation. And the way Frieza basically is like, yep, this is what it's going to be about, huh? It just us beating the shit out of each other while fighting others. So you can see that Frieza is going to be that type of fighter in the tournament to where when Goku's in the middle of a fight, he's like fighting so and all that, like Topo or something. Frieza comes out of nowhere, just smacks him in the back of the head, and just hits him to the ground. Ground, I could see that. That's the type of person Frieza is. And after this, it kind of clarifies that might exactly happen because of how Frieza reacted to Goku when he finally got to do anything he wanted. For instance, punch Goku. So that was a great scene. But I especially like how Goku was like, okay, I want to use instant transmission. You know what this is, right? You've seen it before. And Frieza, oh yeah. So I like that little nod too of how Frieza has seen that move. He's aware of it. I, I do like that, you know, little casual conversation between Goku and Frieza. But then I especially love the scene after that with the transformation sequence to the people that were trying to stop Goku. Now, regardless of how kind of stupid it was for the other universes to send assassins or whatever, when they should be spending their time finding their own fighters and trying to figure out how they could beat someone. I mean, for them to send assassins to try to take down someone from the Tournament of Power, it was kind of stupid because they got to factor this in. For Frieza to be chosen to join the rankings of the fighters of the Tournament of Power, he most likely is not going to be no pushover. He's not going to be a joke. And they even went out of their way to watch clips and stuff on GodTube on Frieza. So they should know that sending assassins, lowly assassins, is not going to work at all against Frieza, but to go one step further, I mean, if they had this many, you know, assassins laying around that could assassinate someone like Frieza, then you think they would have one of the most powerful teams in the Tournament of Power, but I don't know, there, there's a lot of things that are kind of stupid about that, but regardless though, Frieza walks out with Goku because they have people that want to stall time, want to disqualify our universe. Basically, when they get out there, Goku's like, who are you? What, what are you doing? Are you trying to stop us from getting to the tournament? And they're like, we can't answer that. We can't answer that. Just giving no answer at all. They're just there to stall time. And basically, as the conversation continues, they're not getting anywhere. Frieza just shoots a death beam right beside Goku, grazes his cheek, and kills this dude. He just falls to the freaking ground, or into the water, actually, not ground. And the man's gone. And Frieza's like, oh... You know, I've kind of, you know, gotten a little bit, you know, soft being in hell. I, I need to warm up this body of mine. And he's like, oh yeah, my hand also slipped again. That was just so good, because Frieza just shooting this man like that, it just proves that he is not 
there to be a good guy. He's still a villain. He's just on their side. And I just like that at the moment, just seeing how Frieza's still a scumbag. He's still that Frieza we know, and he still will kill people, especially if they get in his way. And the way he shot this man and all that, that was really great. But then, I especially love the moment when Goku's just trying to do instant transmission, just get him out of there and all that, because, like, we have no time for this. And all of a sudden, Frieza's like, huh, we have no time for this. Then I guess we just have to make it quick then. And when all of a sudden he's like, join me. And he transforms and the music just starts cranking up to 11 and all that. And you see his entire form shifting into gold and Frieza. The entire sky just goes gold. And then on top of that, you just see the cuts to the Tournament of Power as it's forming. And when it goes back to Frieza again, just back and forth. And I just love how there was no narration in that. It wasn't giving us a time to when the tournament started or whatever. It was just showcasing that the tournament is finally here and Frieza coming back signifies that how it was going back and forth with no narration just the music just ramping up and when Frieza finally transformed he does his stance like he always does and then he just looks at them he's like well let us begin and I'm like yo like, that, this is so nice it, it's just okay look I, I mean I'm like many that say I would have preferred boobing in the tournament maybe even sell, but I cannot deny that Frieza's transformation, him being back, and how he was just talking with Goku was very interesting. Some of the most interesting stuff I have seen from Dragon Ball Super, because, I, I don't know, just seeing Goku communicate with Frieza like that, and Frieza being someone that's like the exact opposite of Goku, it just... It adds something that was missing in Dragon Ball Super, and I'm glad it's here. This is probably one of my personal favorites, just to see the way the transformation was done, because it reminded me, like I said, of the original Dragon Ball Z transformations of the villains and stuff, when they were powering up and all that, and you're like, holy shit, this power, like, you know that they're about to kill a bitch, and... That's what Freeze is about to do. So yeah, I'm pretty excited for next week's episode. I'm really, really hyped to see what Freeze is going to do and how Goku is going to stop him. Because, I mean, Goku obviously can't harm Frieza a lot or kill Frieza because he needs Freeze on his team. But that means that Frieza can get away with a lot of shit. That means he can go out of his way to kill these people. So uh, I'm really curious to see how Goku is going to try to stop this and see exactly how... Frieza is going to demonstrate his power and all that and how he interacts with Goku too. It's going to be kind of cool. So, one other thing now, or a couple other things now. Now that I got off the Frieza stuff, let's talk about, you know, the episode, okay? So, there was a lot of... A lot of nods to the previous parts of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. I want to talk about the obvious one and then I'll get into the, you know, subtle ones that many might not remember. The first one is Piccolo and Android 17. So Piccolo and Android 17, as we know, they had a very major fight in the middle of Dragon Ball Z. But we remember that was a glorious fight. I, I, that was actually one of my favorite fights in that part of Dragon Ball Z. Just seeing Piccolo and 17 going up against each other, seeing how they were very equal in power. They were just literally beating the shit out of each other. And in the middle of their match, eventually self out, you know, 17 and 18 and absorb 17. We saw Android 16 just wrecking house and all that. Well, because of all this though, that, that was one of my favorite fights. And that fight never really got a proper conclusion to it. It was kind of like stopped in the middle because Cell interrupted. And so that fight was never officially declared with a winner. And when 17 saw Piccolo and Piccolo saw 17, Piccolo takes off his hat and all that. Like, and he looks at 17, 17 rolls up his sleeve, and I'm like, this looks like an OG Dragon Ball Z moment. They're just walking up to each other. I thought they were just about to start beating the shit out of each other or something or punch each other, but that didn't happen. And they just shake hands. And I'm like, oh my god, like, yo, like, it just, it, that was a great moment. Just Piccolo was like, I'm glad you're on our team. Because one of the only people I could really respect 17's strength is definitely Piccolo. Because Piccolo went right up against 17 and fought this man. 17 knows how strong Piccolo is. And it was just a great moment the way that was done. They also fought against Cell. So just seeing that scene, my inner fanboy just was jumping for joy. But then, there was another great exchange that referenced Dragon Ball Z. Now, I don't know necessarily if this is a reference or not, because the, the scene that I feel like it's referencing, if I remember correctly, it's filler. I, I could be wrong there. If I am wrong, correct me. I go for it. Correct me, because I make mistakes. But if I am correct, when, you know, Frieza was defeated and Goku was gone, out in space and all that, well... 
as we know, Krillin, he had a girlfriend. And I don't remember if that was filler or not filler. I, I don't remember. But the name of the girl was Marin, if that's how you pronounce it. And basically, if it was filler, I don't know if Toei was trying to reference that or make that type of joke. But if it was not filler, then it definitely was a reference towards it. Like, there's no doubt about it. Basically, Seventeen calls, his, you know, his actual niece, Marin, which directly references Krillin's ex-girlfriend. And I'm like, bro, like, did, did 17 just do that? Did he just reference Krillin's ex-girlfriend? The way 18 looked, it looked like she was really pissed off. Not just because the name was messed up, but because of who he referenced. It seemed like 18 was about to kill a bitch. Like, he, he was mad. Like, 18 was seriously mad. But then, I love how awkward that was between the entire group. How, like, Krillin didn't know what to do. He's like, uh, I don't know what I could say to this man. I don't know what I could say to 17. And then 18's like, stop forcing yourself to make a conversation. It's kind of awkward. It just, that was so awkward, but funny to see the interaction between these characters. And I also like how 17's like, I'm 17. Like, he's acting like he's age 17 or something. Like, oh. Like, just very awkward. Just some awkward stuff that was going on in this episode. But I had a lot of fun with that. Now, anyways, let's get to the uh, subtle stuff, okay? So, one of the subtle things is focusing around Master Roshi. Now, I found it very interesting how Master Roshi, he was training in this episode. He talks about the Mafuba and all that. He talks about how his techniques could be very helpful in the Tournament of Power, which makes a lot of sense. I've discussed this before. But he goes along going down memory lane, thinking about everything he's accomplished or who he trained under, his techniques and all of that. And it just really reminded me of Dragon Ball and how Master Roshi, he was this very prominent character in the series that you should never underestimate and how he was just thinking about things, thinking about where he came from and how he learned, how he cannot fly, just all these little nods to his character and then on top of that, to go one step further, when he looked at Gohan, he's like, you look good, Gohan, like basically giving him support, acknowledging him for, you know, training and becoming stronger and I'm thinking to myself, like, did Master Roshi just reference, you know, Gohan? Like... The original Gohan, like, not Gohan or Gohan in Dragon Ball Z and Super, but I'm talking about the original Gohan. Did Master Roshi kind of, like, do that? Did, did he just reference him? And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, like, it, there was just some moments with Master Roshi that really took me by surprise, and I, I'm really loving this about Dragon Ball Super, just the way that the series is doing that. I mean, if there is one thing we can say, okay, regardless of some things that are probably not written that properly, like especially with how, you know, Khalifa and Kale got their Super Saiyan, besides stuff like that, you cannot deny that Dragon Ball Super has been very good with bringing certain characters that have been useless throughout Dragon Ball Z back into the series and being important once again. It really makes me happy to see that. Like, Master Roshi, seeing Krillin, you know, being important. 18, 17, Piccolo coming in and all that. It just, it makes me happy seeing these characters getting development, you know, changing, trying to grow stronger. I, I love how it's not just focusing on Goku, Vegeta, and Gohan. I'm glad it's focusing on other characters as well. And so seeing it focus on Master Roshi once again goes to that main central point I've been talking about for a while, is that I really love how they're just nodding to these events and they're not forgetting about these characters. So that's about it when it comes to this episode. It was a great episode. Can't wait to see what happens next. Can't wait to see if the other universes get away with what they're doing to Goku and Frieza. We'll see where that goes, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I love you all so much. Please be safe. Chibi